will appear to be seated over where Paul is. It's a fascinating concept, and, <laughs> and we couldn't be more excited. Now, I know you, you in the studio audience are saying, well, uh, watching this, will it make me dizzy or will I get headaches? Now, take a look at the monitors above you. Now, the monitors will show you the image when it becomes reversed. If for some reason you feel disoriented, lightheaded, or woozy, simp or woozy, simply look into one of the mirrors that we have mounted next to the monitor, and you will that way be able to get your bearings back again. Okay, so we've covered all of the possibilities of trouble here in the studio. You folks at home are saying, well, Dave, how may I and my family best enjoy this unbelievable experiment tonight? All right. We've prepared this brief videotape showing you how to best enjoy the wonderful effects of reverse image television. Watch those monitors now. Here's our own Al Frisch. Good evening. Here are a few reflective surfaces suitable for viewing a reverse image telecast. A mirror, whether a wall mirror, a hand mirror, or pocket mirror, will yield the truest image. A window or pan of still water will also work, although resolution and color may suffer. The more adventurous of you can also try a toaster, a butter knife, or some aluminum foil. Highly polished rock, especially obsidian, will also work, and some scientists speculate that superheated gas plasma suspended in a powerful magnetic vacuum or a cloud of water vapor filled with ionized particles could also be used for this purpose. Whatever you choose, have fun watching the Reverse Image Show, another example of the contribution of science to the world of entertainment. Ladies and gentlemen, we're just minutes away from reversing the image you're looking at right now. And before we do that, I'd like to introduce uh, friends and dignitaries who have assembled here from all over the globe to be with us tonight. First, please welcome Mr. Bill Fanning and Ms. Cheryl Wolfe of Rockwell International, the company responsible for the lunar walks and the space shuttle flights. Next, from the Texaco Corporation, Foster Morgan and Lois Johnson, Texaco, where you can trust your car to the man who wears the star. <laughs> Next, Dr. Ramesh Mehta and associates from the Institute for Advanced Optic Studies in Bombay. Next to him, Dr. Toshi Toda and Dr. Thomas Ikata, founders of the Tokyo Conservatory for Reversed Technology. I wish I was there now. Next, from the Defense Department, Lieutenant Colonel George Peters. And from NBC Sales Vice Presidents Bob Blackmore and Ron Dobson. And ladies and gentlemen, finally, an observer from the United Nations Ambassador at Large, Dr. Gunnar Lundquist. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for your participation and cooperation here tonight. Are you excited? All right, let's now take a brief look into the nerve center for reverse image television, and we'll show you how this is going to happen. Walk this way, if you will. Of course, if you could, you wouldn't need the talcum powder. All right. <laughs> Here we are once again in the control room, and uh, this is where it will happen. In a few minutes, the image you're now looking at will be completely reversed. This is a big moment for all of us, isn't it? Sure is. We're almost ready, Dave. Yeah, it's so exciting. Many of us had to put on lab coats. All right. Uh, let's meet the man who was responsible for developing the system of reverse image television. Fred, if you'll come in here, please. This man is Fred Himmelfarb, who is the principal senior staff engineer here for NBC. Fred, how long have you worked for NBC? 33 years. And uh, at what point did you begin working on the reverse image system? Right at the beginning. So this has been and will be the culmination of a long career for you. I hope so. All right, Fred. Uh, electronically, tell us how this happens. Well, in a normal camera, an electron beam scans the optical image from left to right and produces an electrical signal, which is sent to your receiver in which an electrical scanning beam, the electrical signal is converted back to an optical image when the electrons strike the uh, phosphor in the picture tube. In order to get uh, reverse deflection, we take the signal from the camera and store it in a digital uh, memory unit 
And instead of reading it out from left to right in synchronism with the monitor, we read it out from right to left. So that information that's on the right side of the picture, t of the picture normally would appear at the receiver on the left side. And this gives you a 180 degree reversal. Fine, Fred, I I'm beginning to understand why it took you 33 years. <laughs> um, all right, now, Fred, show us the piece of equipment here on the control panel that will actually begin the reverse image process. The uh, digital effects unit is right here. Right there. This is the button, the illuminated button? Yes. All right, that's the one that will be pressed. Okay. You folks all set in here? We're all set. I'll go back to home base. Fred, thank you and congratulations. Yeah, Good luck. Right, Godspeed, everyone. everyone. All right, stand by. All right. Home base for Dave. Stand by. Really getting and exciting now, isn't three. it? <laughs> all right. In five. Wait a minute. Four, wait a minute. Don't do it three, without me. Two. Hold it. Hold it. Okay. Are you Paul, ready? Are you now, ready? Dave? Yes. Okay, Hal. Okay. In five, four, three, two, one, go. Thank you very much for your enthusiastic response, and we certainly have reason to be excited, but let, let me caution you about being overly optimistic. We've only just begun here. We have a full show to do, so let's just save our celebrating to the very end. But again, thank you very much. We're all quite excited. Uh, tonight, we have a wonderful show. Carol, we see, wake the kids, phone the neighbors. We'll be right back. image television and uh, the the feeling here is is it's kind of giddy isn't it Paul it's very exciting I uh, I don't really know what to think about it for one thing my this thing is in the, my other I know ear. that's just one of the many wonders of this process I know it's very very weird all right well uh, we're taking it a step at a time and we hope you at home are enjoying it as much as we are here in the studio my next guest is one of the top models of the world. Oh, boy, is she ever. Here she is. Uh, this was her cover uh, two years ago in Sports Illustrated. And she also appears currently in the present issue of uh, the swimsuit uh, 1984 issue of Sports Illustrated. Uh, 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 let's see, where am I? It's a pleasure to welcome, as I mentioned, one of the top models in the world, Carol Alt. Yeah. This is, a, this is a beautiful, a beautiful cover of you. This was two years ago, right, in, in yes. Kenya? And it's even better in reverse. <laughs> yeah, we've, uh, have you ever, uh, ever seen yourself backwards? Yes, once I saw a picture that was flipped, only I didn't know it was flipped until somebody told me. Yeah, uh, I think the Russians experimented with that procedure a few years ago. But it was photo, it wasn't TV. This is a very big deal here. Oh, yeah, here. we're on the cutting edge of technology tonight. I'll tell you, back there, they're all going crazy. You should have seen it when they flipped it. The whole green room jumped up and cheered. Did they really? Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, how many how many covers have you appeared on? How many covers have your picture been on uh, magazines? Well, uh, my father lost count at about 350 covers. Wow. And that was about a year ago. In in what period of time was that? That was about three years. Now the the cover the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue does that generate more attention than other covers? This particular cover, yeah, it did. I couldn't believe it. I at. At that point, I'd only been on about 200 and some odd covers, and I never received <laughs> one piece of fan mail. That thing came out, and I was getting fan mail every week. What kind of fan mail, Carol? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> was it a uh, um, regular guy kind of stuff? And You know, the usual. Are you married? Do you uh -huh. want to go out on a date? I'll be in New York at this time. Are what, you free? <laughs> what kind of dates were they interested in? Oh, I mean, what? no, movies. I know what they're interested in, obviously, <laughs> but... What, they, nice. Did they have plans for you? They wanted to... Oh, they were... 
they were asking for movies and for dinner and for Lazarium. I got asked to go to Lazarium once. <laughs> yeah, did you did you go? No, I told them I'd just conveniently happen to be out of town at the time. <laughs> all right, now tell me what this is, Carol. This, of course, will all also be backwards. That what, is what are we portfolio. Looking at? All right. Don't laugh. That's my life in there. Now, what do you do with this? Is this is this how you get jobs? Do you send this around? Or... No, I'm serious. What? Look at what them all does... laughing. It's how you. This is how a model gets jobs. A lot of sweat and time goes into making one of these things. What have they done here? It's Carol? called a portfolio. Um, this here is just a lot of makeup <laughs> and okay. hair. They just wanted to do something different. These are publications from all over the world? Yeah, bizarre. This was GQ. Now, who is this guy? He... <laughs> You're going to put me on the spot. I hope that guy's not watching because I don't even remember. But it looks name. like you know the guy from the picture, but obviously you don't. I knew him from that day. Yeah. yeah. He seemed to be a nice guy. <laughs> I guess as guys go. As guys go. But you, a, a model of your stature still has to have this book to get work? Um, yeah. It's, it's a must. Yeah. That gets sent out instead of me now, though. <laughs> I guess it's a nicer deal. Instead of saying, can you send up Carol Alt, they say, can you send Carol Alt's book over? Tell me a little bit about your uh, recent marriage. Wasn't it a recent marriage to yes. Ron Greshner? Three months ago yesterday. Now, what's that like being married to a, a, a man who makes his living playing hockey? Well, Sunday night, I wasn't too thrilled with him. What happened Sunday <laughs> he got night? Into the biggest fight I've ever seen him get into. This was at the apartment, or? No. <laughs> but you know. You got me. <laughs> this was obviously here in town at the Garden. Yes, at the Garden. Who were the, who were the Rangers playing? I right, in Philadelphia. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, what happened? He punched this guy because this guy hit somebody on his team, and the next thing I know... Is, is Ron like a, an enforcer, like a, a goon, one of those guys? No, he just sticks up for everybody else on the team. So All that, the littler guys. So that says. is like the enforcer. I mean, that's part of his job, to make oh, no, sure nobody... Nikki, they call Nicky Fatia the enforcer. Okay. Because Nicky doesn't wear a helmet and he hits everybody, but Ronnie hits <laughs> for a specific reason. Uh -huh. And what happened? You're watching the game, then I what I was happened? watching the game, I had three friends with me, and the next thing I know, he's, these two start going at it and throwing down their gloves and their helmets go flying and the sticks go flying. And they fought for a really long time. And I could tell they started getting tired because they, they rested in the middle. And then they started fighting again. They rested? Yes. Hmm. And then they came. They, they had a five-minute five minute penalty. Yeah. And <laughs> w was uh, your husband injured at all? Yes. He hit... <laughs> Yes, he hit the guy's helmet with his with his fist. Ooh, brother. So, yeah, he got a couple yeah. of real good stitches. And, of course, I'm sitting there with three of my friends, and they came up. They sent somebody up from the locker room and said, uh, Mrs. Greshner, I said, yes. Would you please come down to the locker room? What? Is he here? What's the matter? I went nuts in the, yeah. in the audience. Well, sure, that would be very And, of course, the two sections all around me, they all know who I am. So yeah. they, every time he gets into a fight, they all turn around and see what's going on yeah. up in my stand now he uh, at the wedding wasn't he also busted up a little bit five stitches down his nose oh brother <laughs> uh, i wasn't too thrilled about that either three days before the wedding this has got to be tough to live with a guy getting the uh, zippers in his face all the time <laughs> uh carol we have to do a commercial here and uh thank you very much for being here on an oh, historic it's a piece occasion. of history i wouldn't have missed it for anything well you're darn right <laughs> uh we'll be right back ladies and gentlemen we're coming to you in reverse image Letterman tonight on E. When you see this show, I think you're going to drop to your knees and thank God there's television. Tonight, 10 Eastern and 7 Pacific, late night with David Letterman, only on E. Very nice. Hi there. We're back, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Carol, again, let me uh, let me thank you and congratulate you on uh, your modeling success. Thank and uh, say hello to your husband for us. And, and if he's free, uh, maybe at the end of the season, uh, we'd like uh, to have you folks come back and, and chat with us some more. That would be great. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Carol Alt again. Thank you so much for being here. Very, uh, please. Uh, Hal, is, uh, do, do we have a problem, Hal? We're working on it, Dave, but it's just gone out of... All right, is there any... Uh, Anything that we should do? Uh, all right. Okay. Okay, great.
right. Uh, Carol, thank you very much again for being here. Uh, you're a delightful young lady. We uh, have to go away for a commercial. We'll be back uh, with a visit from the Peace Through Dramatization player. So join us, won't you? Thank you very much, Paul. Coming up in the moment, we're midway through the first reverse image telecast. This really is a momentous occasion, and we all hope that the process of reverse image will be used for the benefit of mankind for good, not for evil. So <laughs> let's take a look now at some historical television moments through the miracle of reverse image TV. I think you all remember the moonwalk, and I think you'll agree with me that now that you've had a chance to see it from both angles, it more than justifies the billions of tax dollars we spent on it. Here, here are the tall ships sailing into New York Harbor on our bicentennial. If you look closely, you can see that the jibs are all on the wrong side. It's kind of very... Oh, now here is the McCarthy hearings, and it kind of makes you think twice about the validity of those procedures, doesn't it? Here's a familiar sight. This is, uh, takes on a completely different look with the crocodile on the other side of the shirt. <laughs> Here, of course, coming up next is legendary pitcher Sandy Koufax, and I bet you never thought you'd see him throwing right-handed, did you, Will? <laughs> there he is. And finally, here's some traffic footage, and I think this is probably the most impressive demonstration of this technique. It's almost like being in Great Britain, isn't it? <laughs> All right, there you go a look at the capability of reversed image television broadcasting. Now, in just a moment, our beloved Paul Schaefer and myself will be taking an historic first reverse image walk, but before that, we would like to introduce to you the piece through dramatization players featuring the lovely Marie O'Donnell in a little play they call <laughs> March Through Progress, a salute to reverse image. Kids? Hurry up and finish eating, everybody. We've got six hours of family television viewing ahead of us. Imagine over 30 channels to choose from. Now that we have cable, television has gone as far as it possibly can. Oh, I'm tired of watching TV. Tired, tired of, of watching, watching TV? TV? Tommy. Tommy! Well, it's always the same old thing. Sometimes I, I wish I could reverse the image of television. <laughs> reverse the image of television? I, I've never heard of such nonsense. Well, good could it be? Well, Mom and Dad, it would be just like regular television, only the picture would be reversed. Hmm. That would be wonderful. But it's just a crazy dream. is it? <laughs> That's good. That was, that was so nice. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Maria, thank you very much. Gosh, you kids make me proud. <laughs> well, now it's time for what I think Gosh, you kids make me proud. <laughs> well, now I think it's time for what I think we've all been waiting for, the first reverse image walk. Let me explain that Paul, and, excuse me, Paul and uh, myself are about to leave the studio and make our way out into the hallway, the murky unknown. Now, this whole procedure is completely untested. Once again, everything will be completely reversed, and Paul and I... Oh, hi, Paul. I'm right here. <laughs> We will not be tethered in any way to the studio, Absolutely will we? Absolutely, no way will we be tethered. All right, Paul, let's let's go on out here. To the studio, boy. This I think is the kids really... are getting better, don't you? They are fabulous. The, yes, sir. Uh, we should use them more on the show. I'll tell you, this is a little bit. I feel a little shaky. It takes a minute to get your sea legs, doesn't it? How do you is do, there a gentlemen? Tilt to this too. Oh, now look at this. Look at this. This is amazing. Look at that. 
Unbelievable. Yeah, these are... It's right to left. It's like Hebrew, right to left. That's right. And normally, it's on the, the whole other side. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. 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 How do you do? Nice to see you. I powered management in there. Oh, uh, all right. All right. Oh, look at this. From that Woody Allen movie. Look at this. This is the makeup room, and, and everything here appears to be backward. That's right. Everything is reversed. But what about yeah. the mirrors? How do they... I don't know. It's just... Is uh, it, are the mirrors reversed again, twice? You, you know, I, these are questions for which I have no answers. <laughs> Kind of applies to the whole show. Now, look at Paul. Look, look, Paul. What? Are you all right? Yeah. No, all right. I'm just. Uh, it's a little weird. You're this a little woozy. Effect, are you? Yeah. It makes me. But I'm fine. Okay. Well, let me show you this. Look at this sign here. Rehearsal. This, yeah. It's complete. It's backwards. It all goes. Yeah. Right. Right to left. Yeah. This is crazy, think, isn't uh, it? Yeah. What else oh. do we have out here? This is. Uh, oh, look at look at this. The giant. The giant six B. This is Studio Six B. We're in Six A. Look. This is this is backwards. That's not the way that's supposed to look. And oh, like, look at this. This is great. The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson. That's completely backwards. But look. Look at this, Paul. Paul, look at this right up here. Can you see this? Look. Ed, Ed is sitting in Johnny's seat. <laughs> you know, that never happens. <laughs> hey, I'm really feeling. Can, can we sort of uh, stop this thing? Because I can't. I'm walking is it around beginning here to Bobby? the reverse thing. Okay. Is it? Maybe we get, yeah, get we... Paul some fresh air. What do we do? Gotta... All right, I'll tell you what. Uh, we'll do a commercial. It'll be all right, Paul. I'll Just walk right. around a little bit. Yeah? We'll be right all back, right. folks. Here, come all on. Right. Let's go back over here. Okay. You all set? You know, we couldn't imagine having a reverse image show without a demonstration of French cooking, so we've asked the executive chef of Le Cirque, one of the leading French restaurants in the United States to join us on this special occasion. Please welcome Alain Sayac. Alain, nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you, guys. How are you? What, uh, what are we going to do? So we're going to do quail in Donest. Quail in Donest, which yeah. is? We have a quail eggs. Quail eggs? You know, uh -huh. they have a quail eggs. Here they have a quail eggs with the skin and without skin. Peeled and, and uh, not peeled, peeled and quail not eggs. Peeled. All right, yeah. these are hard-boiled quail eggs? Hard-boiled quail eggs. All right, and what are, what are these? This is quail only. Is it quail? Quail. Jeez. I've seen, uh, <laughs> I've seen M&M's bigger than this. What? <laughs> All right, go right ahead. Is there anything I can do to assist you with? All right, so I'm going to start to make a mess. Apparently, I'll be doing quite a lot in the way of assisting. <laughs> You're, uh, you ordered one of those from TV, didn't you? <laughs> are, you are you happy with it? Oh, beautiful. Uh -huh. <laughs> So, okay. Now I make it a nest. This is an, in a nest of potatoes. Nest of potatoes. All right. Where would you eat this uh, dish? I mean, what time of day? Uh, uh, lunch? Dinner? Dinner and lunch sometimes. Uh -huh. And uh, if, if I would order this in your restaurant, what would it cost me? Uh, between uh, 95 and uh, 23 75 something like that. It depends, you know, what we put in. <laughs> between 95 and, and 23.75? Between uh, 19.75 and 23.75. It depends on what we put inside the coin. Oh, oh, I see. So Sometimes, roughly under, under 30 bucks, you could get one of these, huh? Oh, yes. Yeah, okay. Much less. So this is kind of for you folks on a budget. This would be a... Uh... <laughs> oh, that's... You're uh, deep frying those guys? That's right. All right. How long do you do that? Oh, for two, three minutes. Now, now, when you're cooking, now, your restaurant gets a lot of famous people in there, don't they? Oh, yes. Now, does that make you nervous when you, you know somebody famous is in the, in the restaurant? Uh, no, because we use it to have them almost every day. Yeah. Have you ever really screwed something up and served it anyway? Uh, I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you wouldn't do that, would you? I try not to do it. Yeah. You, you don't make any mistakes at all, or...? Oh, I make a mistake yeah. many times. Yeah. If something's ready to go, have you ever, ever dropped it? Sometimes, sometimes yeah. it depends. Now, wh wh how do you handle that? Somebody's been waiting for like a half an hour for this deal, and then you drop it, then what do you do? Uh, so we try to excuse us, and we put a bottle of champagne on the table, you know, and <laughs> so... That makes up for it. A, yeah, it's the only way to wait. Okay, how are we doing on the nest there? Okay, the nest will be ready, and mm -hmm. now we're going to cook the quail. Cook the quail. Where do you get quail this time of year, Alain? Uh, from New Jersey. This is New is Jersey it? quail? Yeah. <laughs> New Jersey quail. <laughs> It's the stuff you see flattened on the road? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, doesn't take too long to cook those, does it? Uh, ten minutes. Ten minutes, all right. I know we don't have the time of this. Okay. What do you have in this other pan? 
This is a sauce. Sauce with that. Armagnac sauce, foie gras, and raisin. All right. Are these quail eggs expensive, these deals here? Uh, yes. Each quail egg costs between uh, 10 cents and 35 cents. It depends the year, it depends where you buy, you mm -hmm. know, stuff like is that. Is this as big as they get? Yeah, yeah. This is the biggest one. Okay. Where do you get quail eggs? Uh, same place, from I guess. The same right? place. Yeah, sure. <laughs> you're, you're, all your quail needs, one stop shopping in, in, in New Jersey. They have the quail, they have the eggs, they have the adapters, they have everything. It's uh, just a matter of. Um, are you excited about reverse image television? I'm fascinated, you know, because I don't know what, what we're going with the, with the war. You I know, know, it is kind of the great unknown here. So we're going to be born, yeah? Okay. All right, those are just about done. That's all. Okay. Yeah. All righty. How many will this serve? Let we serve only one person with it. Wow, one person. Yeah. Now, this is a main course, an appetizer, a dessert? Main, main course. Main course. All main right. Course. Is this an original yeah. recipe from you? Uh, I think many people know to do that, you know. Yeah. No, I didn't invent that, you know. I is, is that what chefs do, though, is they, they think up new, new ways to cook food? I don't think it's a new way to cook food. No, yeah. not really, you know. This is a classic dish, you know. Have, have you ever, like when you're driving to work, do you ever say to yourself, I got a great idea? Sometimes. Yeah? What was the last one you thought thought about? Uh, the last one? <laughs> what do you mean, a great idea? Yeah, was something to cook. Uh, it's very hard to see if it's a great idea. Go ahead and use your fingers uh, on that. <laughs> yeah, because it's uh, fast, you know, yeah. and I used to the finger, you know, for okay. everything, you know. All right, so the last <laughs> great recipe idea you had was what? Uh, it was a uh, lobster, lobster in Courbouillon. And, and what is that? that? This lobster cooked very, very fast in one minute, you know, with a very, very uh, lot of vegetables, very, very, very fast. In one steam, minute and a lot of vegetables? Is yeah, it like stir-fried or something? No, 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 steam. Uh -huh. Oh, steam. Steam, steam. and that, uh, people love that, you know? Put just a little vinegar, and that's all. Salt, pepper, and dill. Okay. And salt, pepper, love and that dill? Because it's very light. Mm -hmm. Put it people on a bun? Love. Put it in a plate. Okay. <laughs> right. okay. You want to see the... How, how are we doing here on time? Sure, let's see the finished product. The finished product. Oh, that's yeah. beautiful. Wow. This yeah. is very nice. Now, you have the, the eggs in the potato basket, and the, uh, the quail, and then the grapes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We're going to need ketchup. Paul, do you have the... <laughs> Yeah. Now, is, is there part of that I, c I can try to eat? Sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. Which, sure. which part? Okay. You want to cut for me? Sure. Cut me a little... Uh... I've never eaten quail before. Yeah. Do you enjoy the taste of it? Oh, I love quail. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Let me just... We'll taste it and then yeah, we'll... Just to do it up a little bit in the sauce. Right? Putting it a little in the sauce. Yeah. That's that special sauce, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, little, little grapes. Little grapes on top. Some grapes? Oh, okay. Paul, would you like a little of this? Oh, boy, whatever. All right, well, <laughs> well, get yourself on over here, sir. Uh, chef, thank you very much. Let me, let me try this. Here we go. Oh, yeah. That's Fry tasty. Eggs. Yeah. A little bit of New Jersey right there in your fork. <laughs> That's very good. Very good. Thank you very much, Elaine. Pleasure thank meeting you. Very good. Elaine Sayak. Thank you, sir. Thank you, we'll be back with Ted. Thank you. Tonight, once again, our, uh, our image has been reversed, and we hope you're enjoying it, because uh, in lab coat rental alone, we have dropped a bundle on this show. <laughs> My next guest is a talented comedian. He is from the uh, fine city of Boston, Massachusetts. He works out regularly at the Improvisation in Los Angeles. Quite a commute. Please welcome <laughs> Teddy Bergeron. Teddy. Well, thank you, thank you, and welcome. Uh, I uh, love it here in New York City. Uh, I've spent the last two years in Los Angeles. Uh, basically, the two years were spent trying to figure the people out there <laughs> because they're somewhat different. I remember one night I was playing my stereo really loud, about three in the morning, blaring through the room, and uh, a little old lady that lives in the next apartment started banging on my door. What the hell's the matter with you? Turn the bass up! <laughs> sure. But I'm back in New York, uh, East Coast, where people are normal. A little too normal. Too formal here. So I dress tonight like this because uh, it's an efficient city. 
Today, someone asked me for the correct time. Hadn't heard that in a long time. Excuse me, uh, young man, if you got the correct time, I have a meeting, I need the correct time. As opposed to what, the incorrect time? I mean, who wants to know that? Bright, sunny day, man's walking along a beach. Have you got the incorrect time? It's uh, midnight. Thank you. <laughs> but I started uh, in Boston, my comedy career, and I had to leave, uh, unfortunately. It's a great comedy city now, but when I started, there wasn't that much, and they were very skeptical to me. I'd be funny, they'd be going, well, what are you doing? But I think we all deal with skeptics, don't we? It seems whenever you're really trying to be yourself and enjoy yourself, someone's got to come by and try and ruin it for you and everyone else. I took my little brother Georgie to see Peter Pan. He was so excited. He'd never been to a play. And at the end of the play, Sandy Duncan took a bow, and then she flew way over the crowd. And the children were ecstatic. Look at her fly! Look at her fly! And there's always that one jerk in the back in a deep voice. She's on a wire! She's not flying, she's on a wire. There's no Santa Claus, and she's on a wire! She's flying! She's flying! She's not! She's on a wire! It's gonna break! She'll land on it, you'll die! If you live, you'll be a vegetable. <laughs> but I, I, I enjoyed it. I loved Boston. I enjoyed growing up there. Used to watch TV, of course. In the 50s, TV was big. First show I ever watched was Bonanza. That was a big show, bigger than life, wasn't it? Remember Bonanza? <laughs> dum diddy dum diddy dum diddy dum 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 show. <laughs> Whoa. Hello, little Joe. Hello, Hoss. Adam, you look puzzled. What's wrong, Adam? <laughs> Well, you're my father, right? That's right, son. Why am I older than you? <laughs> I don't know. Come on, boy. <laughs> oh, but it was macho those days. Macho. Everything was macho. Westerns, army movies, Roman gladiators. You remember them? You've saved us, Hercules. And we thank you. <laughs> I thank you. Demosthenes thanks you. Demetrius, thank you. Delirious would thank you, but he's out of his mind. <laughs> and, of course, the commercials were macho, too. They kind of made fools out of macho guys. There was one where the guy was dressed pretty much like me on his way to work, checking his watch for the correct time, you know, on his way out the door with a briefcase. No time for the wife. She's very upset. Honey, breakfast is on the table. I'm very sorry, darling. I forgot. I, I have a very important meeting with the boss. If I'm late for this, he's going to have my... <laughs> Do I smell hostess crumb cakes? <laughs> Hello, boss. I can't make it. The wife just made hostess crumb cakes. That's right. Close the company down and get over here. <laughs> well, they made a big deal out of, like, nothing products. I remember a uh, commercial was on all the time. Remember Campbell's Soup? What's that? 29 cents, 39 cents a can. Mother would bring it home from shopping. There would be the family sitting around the dining room table with their heads in their hands. My life is miserable. <laughs> Mother would come in, reach in the bag, pull out a little 29 cent can of soup, and the entire family would start singing and dancing around the house. Mmm, <laughs> good, mmm, good can of soup. <laughs> I mean, it's a good thing she didn't bring home steak and potatoes. <laughs> They'd be marching downtown. We're having steak and potatoes. We're having steak and potatoes. Tomorrow we'll have some corn. <laughs> Oh, people are gullible. Like, the chef will get a kick out of this. I live in, in L.A. right now, and uh, you know what the people do there? They'll go to restaurants and order a New York steak. That's like the big item in, the, uh, in L.A., the New York steak. I'll have the New York steak, okay? These idiots think steak comes from New York. <laughs> like, there are guys now in Times Square walking around in 10-gallon hats. All right, roll them out! Get those strays off the Chrysler building! <laughs> Thank you. But this is a, a, a late-night show, and I'm going to move to a late-night commercial to show how gullible the American people are. This is the kind of thing you would see normally on a late-night commercial. <laughs> oh, hi. Didn't know you are watching. <laughs> they may not believe this, but five weeks ago, I could not play the piano. <laughs> Five weeks ago, I did not have 1,001 piano songs made easy. Just by following the directions, I can play all the top songs. Songs like, hey, let me show you. Here's one, tie a yellow ribbon round the hook. Songs like, bring drops keep falling on my head. Country rest in your bag, my baby. Oh, okay, well. Well, thank you. Nice job, Eddie. No, no, fine. We'll be right back. Thank you very much.
ladies and gentlemen. Nice job, Teddy. Thank you. Sir. Nice to meet you. Please come back and see us whenever you're. Uh... Oh, certainly. Thank you for the invitation. Yeah, anytime. Really, very really funny stuff. Thank Hal, uh, is the phone call ready? We have a very special phone call from a very special man. I believe it is, Dave. All right, is it right here on the line? I'll take it. Yeah, hello. Good evening, Mr. Latterman. It's Colonel Gordon Cooper speaking. <laughs> Well, um, Colonel, uh, good evening. It's quite an honor to be speaking with you, sir. Oh, the honor is mine, David, to be a part of your historic reverse image telecast. Let me just add my congratulations on the success of your bold experiment. Well, thank you very much, Colonel. David is a Project Mercury astronaut. I orbited the Earth blazing new frontiers. While you, as an NBC TV personality, are broadcast into numbers of homes in many parts of the country. Keep up that good work. Well, I'll certainly do my best, Colonel. Well, America's proud of you. And also that little guy who plays piano for you. Congratulations again. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much for calling again, uh, Colonel Cooper. Always an honor. Good night, Dave. Good night, uh, Gordon. <laughs> Pretty exciting, isn't it? Are we going into the control room now? Okay, let's... Let's take one final look at the festivities in our control room as the completion of this historic evening comes to a close. Here he comes. He's coming to the control room now. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Bill, will you have the ushers pass out the Dramamine, please? <laughs> oh, I'm going in. I'm sorry. Good heavens. Just kind of test. What time is rehearsal? All right. Well, congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. I think we've done it again. All right. Uh, that's it. Are we, we finished here? All right, Larry, go ahead. I don't know. What, what are you going to say? I don't know. We're up the air. Okay, this is uh, working even better than I had hoped. Uh, I want to thank everybody who was a part of this magic evening. We'll see you tomorrow night. Good night.